Hello and welcome. I am Cyril Stover. In 1992, the Nigerian government set up an agency to coordinate and nurture appropriate science and engineering infrastructure to attain a sustained industrialization for economic growth. Now, its mandate was in capital goods research, production and reverse engineering in industrial chemical materials, scientific equipment and components, engineering, accessories, and so many others. Now, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, was primarily to drive the process of technological development. Today, I'm sitting with its chief executive, the executive vice chairman and chief executive, Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna. He holds a PhD and Master's of Engineering degree in Electrical Engineering from Bayero University, Kano. Another PhD in Entrepreneurship Technology, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, Nairobi. Prior to that, he obtained the National Diploma and Higher National Diploma in Electrical Engineering from Plato Polytechnic and Kaduna Polytechnic. A one-time head of Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Kaduna Polytechnic, and visiting lecturer to Bayero University, Kanu, Professor Haruna is a chartered engineer of the United Kingdom Engineering Council, CORIN, that's the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, fellow of the UK-based Institution of Electrical Engineers, now Institution of Engineering and Technology, fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering, Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and Fellow of the Nigerian Association of Technologists in Engineering. Now, he belongs to so many of these uh, bodies and uh, has so many professional certificates. But we'll just pause here for a moment and say welcome to one on one to Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna. Thank you very much, Cyril. It's good to have me. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it, it would seem, you know, going through your yeah. background, it would seem that you have this. Uh, very deep passion for engineering yes. and uh, okay you did take a PhD and then you went and took another mm. PhD in uh, entrepreneurship mm. technology yes. um, mm. that's not uh, what you see around it's yes. not a common thing to do yes. um, what are you thinking well uh, I thank you very much for this uh, very interesting question um, from the brief you have said uh, I actually started as a craftsman, uh, technician, work with so many companies, including NASCO group of companies, as a technician, engineer, production manager. I was even maintenance and services manager at New Nigeria, uh, a printing and publishing mm -hmm. company. Then uh, I switched to business. We set off uh, maintenance and services, facility maintenance, repairs, uh, company doing repairs of uh, equipment, machinery, generators, and doing electrical installations uh, was a company. Later on, I went back to the academy, uh, continue with the PhDs and teaching. But I discovered that uh, there is a lot to do in order to build the know-how of the engineers uh, and the craftsmen around. You see, we have professionals who know their job, but they don't know the business that should run their own profession. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. You may have a good tailor, a good mechanic. While he's working under somebody, he's doing very well. 
you even prefer him to attend to your own issues than his masters. And he got carried away that he's doing well and decided to set off his own. Mm. Usually when he set off his own, he mess off and have a lot of problem. That's why the expertise he has in that. So because he knows the handwork, but he doesn't know the knowledge or he doesn't have the knowledge that should run his own business. Sometimes someone who doesn't even have the profession but have the business know-how or the entrepreneurship will be able to manage engineering and craftsman activities better. That was the reason what gave me the passion in order, I was actually encouraging my staff, my colleagues to go for this, that is an added advantage. When they were unwilling and there was an opportunity, a collaboration between Nigeria and uh, uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture. To set an example, I went to do master's uh, program first, uh, MPL and then a PhD as a motivation and I'm glad a lot of them follow suit and we need this knowledge to be able to run our businesses effectively. So that puts you in a very good position to yes. tell us about um, mm. the engineering mm. system yes. in Nigeria. Yes. Tell us okay. what is the problem <coughs> with engineering and infrastructure yes. in Nigeria? Okay. Now. Um, the problem with engineering and infrastructure pr in Nigeria is what we first and foremost inherited from the colonial masters. Our engineering began not because uh, the British wants us to develop as a nation. It is not the beginning since time immemorial. Science, engineering, technology and innovation has been the foundation has been what is giving any country an age. If you have it, you have the solution. Not the raw materials, not any other things, but this know-how. Now, the type of uh, engineering that was handed over to us was such that we will only be able to process raw materials. The idea is only to process raw material uh, for the year of, and then they will produce products and send it back to us. And that is the reason why, from the beginning, all the systems were meant to process raw materials. We inherited that along the way, and uh, it continued up to uh, 1992 when this agency was set up. There were many research and development institutions in the country doing different research, but these were uncoordinated research. Again, Nigeria has uh, competent professional first class. They are the best whatever wherever they go in the world, but we don't have system that run it here. Uh, you have so many professors, colleges of agriculture, different uh, from Ibadan to Zaria, before even independence were set off. Uh, animal husbandry, all these things are done, but that has not transformed into product other than how best who can process and improve on raw materials that are exported to Europe and we import the finished product. That has been the system until um, during the civil war there were a lot of innovation. Necessity is a model of invention. Mm -hmm. During that time as a result of the war the beer family were forced to do a lot of innovations to develop petroleum bomb, to develop weapons, to solve health problems uh, within the period. Then when we are grateful to God, peace was restored. In 1992, Babangida, I remember uh, Professor Ezekwe, who was at then Minister of Science and Technology, was uh, a leader of a research team that develop a lot of uh, weapons for the Biafra and other solutions. In fact, he has burnt hand as a result of development of petroleum bomb. Babangida told him, you have been Minister of Science for a long time. We didn't bring you to be Minister of Science and Technology to be giving us theories and memos. We thought you will uh, replicate 
the success achieved during the uh, civil war. He told the president then, innovation, industrialization, and uh, capital good production and research is not done under the platform of civil service bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. You need an agency, like a tax force agency, the way it is in Indonesia, the way it is in Malaysia, the way it is in Japan, mention places. So then give me that agency, what are you doing? Uh, 150 man committee was set up in order to study all that is happening in this country. And uh, we developed Naseni in the model and passion of these organizations in order to help us achieve this. So at that time, the agency was set up with a very good intention, with well-structured policy, uh, advocacy, funding structure, operational strategy, everything in place. And it started well from the beginning. And uh, Professor Ezekwe transformed from being Minister of Science and Technology to Executive Vice Chairman of Naseni, so that he can give uh, the lead on how things should be done. Along the way, there were a lot of policy somersault mm -hmm. and uh, not realization of the good intention of government. It continues like that until uh, uh, during the uh, administration of uh, uh, President Jonathan. And then it was, look at, Nigeria started having problems for we continue importation, we continue all this. How do we achieve this? Why has Naseni not achieved to its optimum what is set up? Like it's sister agency across the world. So this issue we are look at, basically, there was lack of political will because all these countries, the agencies must be headed by the president of the country. Science and technology is not a part-time affair. It's a national project that must be driven by the head of government as a commitment that the country wants this as a solution to its problem. And rightly so, uh, we have to defer from what we inherited from the British and adopt the method of the Asian tiger. This is what has given them the solution to all their problems. And we are very happy that there is continuation and even improvement on that under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari. That's why you have not been hearing of Naseni or seen any output from, uh, of Naseni until recently. We are now trying to be on track. We're not properly on the track yet, but definitely we'll go there. So now, answering your problem, the problem with engineering uh, technology and innovation system in Nigeria is that we fail to operate a system. You see, engineering, science, technology, and innovation is in three categories, and everybody must do his job. We have abandoned craft school, technical school. No country has ever abandoned them and succeeded. It's very important because uh, in engineering, you have what to do. That is the work of the craftsmen and technician. How to do it is the work of the technologies. Mm -hmm. And these technologies are produced from diploma to higher national diploma in monotechnics and polytechnics. Then why do you do it? It's the work of the engineers who have first degree uh, in their various fields, uh, who give assignment, who give great job for the technologies and then to the technicians. Again, the game changer of it all is when you have PhDs, professors, who are not satisfied, who will always want to modify what is in existence. So it means they create a job for the engineers, the engineers team up and create a job for the technologies and to the technician. In this hierarchy, if any group is spaced out, you will have problem. So mm -hmm. from your explanation, yes. um, it would seem that we've not done well yes. about um, 
mm. harnessing the great potential mm. from the craftsmen mm. to the technologies yes. and all that. And there's been so much concentration yes. on uh, mm. the engineers who are trying to. And have yes. you heard the mm. maxim that um, mm. oh Nigerian engineers mm. they have it all in theory and uh, very little mm. hands-on mm. yes. training. Yes, exactly. And this is a. Uh, well, um, they are training. Well, Nigerian engineers are receiving training, but of uh, recent, actually, there are challenges of uh, institution producing uh, engineers that have not seen certain equipment they are supposed to be able to operate and even upgrade. So we have taken that challenge by trying and uh, innovating and producing technical science laboratory equipment, mm -hmm. not only for primary school, secondary school, even up to tertiary institution. And uh, our system is practically oriented. We are interacting with the academic institution, bringing the resource persons, exposing them to uh, advanced training equipment, what is uh, obtainable in the modern world. There is that issue, but there are certain institutions that are well equipped and uh, they are giving their students. But most importantly, Nigeria has substantial professional that we are, are trained abroad. They have, uh, they have went to all the best institutions across the world. They have used this equipment. But when they come back home, it's a different system altogether. So wh because why is that? Because the system that needs to manage the science and innovation system is not in place. And one of that, is a political will and the interest of government. And that is the reason why agencies similar to Naseni are headed by their own president. I will tell you, when I was a visitor to a similar uh, institution in Indonesia, BPPT and PT Pindat, uh, when I was appointed, I was uh, surprised. When I arrived at their center, I discovered that they then president of Indonesia uh, was uh, going around. So I was his guest instead. He was the one that took us to all the uh, innovations and uh, production system as if he, he was the managing director or general manager of the place. So to show the interest, he demonstrated to us the equipment they have produced, the aircraft, the armored personnel carrier testing gun himself, and he was very happy to receive uh, Nigerians that came to learn from their progress because they want to be happy that we have COVID their system and we are progressing. Beside, he was classmate of uh, Obasanjo in uh, India, had course with uh, President Muhammad Buhari in the US, so he was happy to see Nigerians doing that. Mm -hmm. This is his involvement. So you cannot do any research and things like that. He's not asking you to go to his presidential villa for a meeting. He come to the center himself to see what is the progress. Okay. You'll be on your toy. Now, mm. in trying to achieve its mandate, yes. Naseni has set up a number of um, mm. uh, uh, sub... Yes, monomandate yes. centers. Yes. 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 And uh, mm. how are these and yes. where are they located and yes. what do they do? Yes. We yes. used to know about... Mm. Uh, uh, what was referred mm. to then as uh, SEDI, yes. and uh, yes. what's the status of that? Uh? Okay, let me start uh, from the SEDI that you are familiar with, since it's even from Niger State. Scientific Equipment Development Institute in MENA is on mandate, as one of the mandates of NASENI is to develop science laboratory equipment such that the problem we are talking about of not teaching people theories without practical, these things should not be imported, they'd be produced in Nigeria. And we thank God that has been a very successful project because the equipment produced for primary school, secondary school, and tertiary institutions are rated among the best in the world, such that the African Union has recommended to all member nations to adopt this product, and it was used worldwide. Even when the International World Olympia was held, the competition, all the equipment used in Addis Ababa and when Nigeria hosted in 2010 were produced by Naseni. We have a similar center to that of uh, MENA in Inugu. It's also Science Equipment Development Institute. Then we have 
Electronic Equipment Development Institute developing doing research in electronic equipment and product in Oka. Uh, we also have uh, National Engineering Design and Development Institution in Inewi, all in uh, Anambra State. We have Power Equipment and Electrical Machinery Development Institute where we produce made in Nigeria transformers and uh, electrical power product in Okene, Koji State. I was the pioneer director of that center. There is also Engineering Material Development Institute in uh, Akure uh, on those states. We also have Prototype Equipment Development Institute in uh, Elisha, where the center's specialization is when we want to reverse engineer any machine that is not our own design. We want to copy some people's technology. They have best facility to adapt to that. Again, in Kano, we have Hydraulic Equipment Development Institute doing research and producing product in hydraulic and pneumatic. That is where our water form drilling for water system, pneumatic system, braking system for industries are produced. We have uh, in Jalingo, Advanced Materials, Ad Advanced Manufacturing Technology Institute in Jalingo. In Nasarawa, we have Solid Mineral Equipment and uh, Development Institute. Altogether, now we have 10 institutions right. with five new ones uh, at different level of uh, taking off. You've just said that mm. um, the science equipment mm. produced mm. in yes. Mina yes. and uh, Inugu were judged yes. to be of uh, yes. world standard. Yes. The question here is mm. how yes. supportive yes. has mm. the administration mm. at all levels, yes. not just the federal government, yes. been yes. Uh, mm. to Naseni and these products that it produces? In yes. other words, yes. can we safely say today that we can walk into mm. any science mm. college yes. or institution mm. and find that? Yes many of this equipment that mm. they're using yeah. are produced here in yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. Um, still some importation are coming, but there is a very great patronage uh, through the UBEC, through the SUBEC, through the Niger Delta Development Authority. There is no state of the federation that you will go to their school without finding substantial part of this equipment. Interestingly, there is also patronage from West African countries. Good. Yes. So which means that you can produce yes. enough we are producing, to sell? We are out. producing large quantities. So why not make, quantity. why mm. would you push for mm. a policy that would say, look, yes. all equipment mm. used in Nigerian schools yes. Yes. must now be produced in Nigeria? Let me tell you, that was part of our discussion with uh, President Muhammad Buhari yesterday, and uh, the federal government is doing something about that. Yes, to ensure that you don't import anything except if you can prove that it's not available locally. And Naseni yes. does have the capacity to Naseni do that. Naseni does have the capacity. But most importantly, we are also inviting private sector. Look, come and take this uh, successful research into the market so that we pace a different research altogether. Just as we did with uh, KK Naseni, we did with Smart Meter, we have invented from PMID. Private sector have taken it for mass production so that we concentrate on a different research area. Speaking of that, yes. um, you mentioned about uh, Power mm. Equipment yes. uh, Manufacturing I Institute um, yes. in uh, Okene. Okene yes. Now, looking at one of Nigeria's biggest challenges, yes. it's obviously in yes. the power sector. Yes. How can Naseni mm. work towards improving this? Yes. You are right. We are worried in Naseni that over 99.99% .99 of all input to our power sector uh, is foreign. And that is dangerous. No one can rely completely on the importation of equipment, uh, sometimes even um, material and even men to come a man is on a very strategic sector like power because without power nothing can work. Um, there is uh, inadequate local uh, you know local content in the power sector and that is the reason why the federal government has set up this 
So far we have commenced a lot of research. What we don't know, we send men outside to go and learn it and uh, for the benefits of the country. In 1999 to early 2020, we have uh, uh, sent our 60 engineers and technicians to China where they learn all aspects of design to selection of material, production, installation, and maintenance of electric power, transformer, high voltage, and some switch gears. And we commend the federal government for giving us this opportunity and approving this training. These people have qualified, came back, and are producing in Nigeria. Now, the federal government is in the process of uh, establishing for us uh, manufacturing and research plant so that that aspect of power, we can say Nigeria can do it and uh, is doing it, has all the competence and have the resources to do it, we shouldn't be importing it. The second one, the high voltage technology, is a necessary component of power. Presently, if you want to assess condition of certain equipment, transformer, circuit breaker, you take samples abroad for analysis to tell you this will fail in uh, so so yes. The uh, uh, private sector will not do that investment for you because they are maximizing profit. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that government must do it itself. But the good thing about these things, when you do them and succeeded in them, in them they are not only self-sustaining, but they are revenue earners for the government besides employment generation and advancement of technology. In relation to this, we are producing solar modules or solar panel, you can call it in Karashi, is the third component of this that is related that uh, government has approved for us. What we need to do next to ensure we have uh, available sufficient in sufficient quantity solar power uh, supply in Nigeria is to produce the solar cells, which is produced from uh, silicon. And silicon is from sun, free of charge. But then you need a machinery. We have learned, we know how to do it. But the capital investment to ensure is in enough quantity. Again, no private sector will go and invest on that and take five, six years before you start the reaping because you need quick profits. Usually across the globe, government does this investment. We have been saying that this is what gave America the lead and the famous Silicon Valley. Mm. It's processing of sun into silicon, into solar cells, uh, into uh, ingot component. And these are not only component for solar energy. They are the bedrock of all electronics, telecommunication, and computer equipment, the chips. So uh, but, but the president has approved this and God willing, Nigeria will soon have it. By the time we are producing our cells, solar cells ourselves, you see many industry will want to set up solar uh, manufacturing plant in Nigeria and the price of solar energy will crash. All right, because yes. it's, uh, yes. it's right there in the yes. sky, is it yes. now? Yes. But let's turn to this other matter that many people say it's, a, it's an everyday thing. Yes. Spares, components, yes. and accessories. Yes. You have a piece of equipment and something goes bad, and uh, spares cannot be yes. you know, acquired. Mm. And what has Naseni been able to achieve in the area of mm. um, spares, yes. electrical, electronic components, yes. accessories, yes. even mechanical? Yes. Well, this is one of the specialization. This is one of the area that uh, Naseni's operation has succeeded because we have state-of-the-art equipment that will analyze any spare part that we don't know it before using computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing by uh, uh, scanning it, measuring it to assess what it is. We will be able to detect what are the materials that was used for it and even improve on it. So through this, we do 3D design to have a 3D model, computer version of it, to produce it, assess it, uh, ensure ascertain its quality, ascertain its strength, 
all other characteristics before we go to actual production. Indeed, we, in, in other words, we produce this virtually first uh, through machine uh, design, and then uh, when we are satisfied, we go into the computer numerical control machine, or what is called CNC machine, to cut this component exactly the same. And subsequent production or more quantity will ensure that there is no variation because it's computer file, there is no changes. And to be uh, specific, this is one of the area that we are collaborating with Innocent Motors for producing certain components. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I was just going to ask you that. that it, do you get challenged yes. by institutions, yes. agencies, both yes. private and yes. government, to yes. say, look, um, this is what we are facing. Yes. Uh, can you come up with uh, possible solutions? Do you get challenged often? We have a lot of these challenges, and we are not able to meet off for so many reasons uh, due to so many constraints. One of such uh, constraints is, of course, uh, funding, because a component that may cost 10,000, 20,000, for example. If you are researching to do it for the first time, you may spend 100, 150,000. Uh, but when you get it first, you correctly, then you are in business. But then, uh, someone who wants his one spare part will not be patient to wait for you. And again, these resources to invest. The uh, annual budgetary system will not allow you to meet certain things because uh, research and development is not a part-time affair, it's continuous. It shouldn't be delayed or suspended because uh, the funds are not released yet or the budget is not yet out. This is one of the constraints that we are happy to announce that uh, through our discussion with uh, uh, President Mohamed Bahari yesterday, uh, he promised our funding mechanism as provided by our act would be, uh, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, well, just <laughs> speaking about that, you held a meeting with uh, mm. the president yes. on, uh, on, on, on Wednesday, yes. the 30th yes. Yes. of December. And yes. uh, we'd like you to give us, now you've spoken mm. of two issues yes. which were part of your discussions. Yes. Beyond that, mm. yes. what are we likely to see as yes. we go in? Uh, are we likely to see in, in, in 2021? Yes. Well, um, the president is very passionate about what we are doing. He has seen things. He has, uh, is impressed with uh, what we achieve in tractor recovery and uh, redeployment to farm and management. And uh, he wants that to be expanded and promised to give us all that is needed. He's worried that majority of our uh, activities in uh, agriculture is still manual, despite our ability to fabricate machine and equipment. And he has given us matching order, which an order to be briefing him quarterly on All the right. achievement so far. You see, that takes <laughs> us to it. You, you yourself are. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, I mean, you went to the uh, yes. uh, University of Agriculture yes. and, uh, <laughs> and, and technology, and technology yes. in in in, yes. <laughs> in Nairobi. Yes. And so mm. this brings us to the question yes. of what mm. you can bring to bear to change yes. the scenario we have in yes. Nigeria's agriculture, which, yes. as you've just said, yes. it's, it's, it's manual to Yes. Uh, but, uh, actually, Naseni has, doing, has been doing a lot in terms of uh, uh, agri-implement, uh, farm machinery, uh, crop processing, uh, treasures to ease all this manual process. But the quantity is not enough. And then the rate we are turning off uh, these things are not enough due to this constraint of funding. But then, there is no year that we don't invent a new one that are deployed in terms of cassava processing, dryers, uh, crop preservation, solar dryer uh, to peach, uh, smokers, to grain treasures. Uh, uh, cassava flour integrated processing small to large equipment but as I said what we are doing is not enough mm -hmm. due to the limitation but uh, with this attention and uh, interest of Mr. President I'm sure 
2021, God willing, will be different. Well, even mm. uh, in the face of um, mm. the private sector being yes. lukewarm to some of these because mm. of uh, yes. the question of uh, mm. quick profits, yes. are you thinking about uh, uh, collaboration in mm. order to expand yes. the scope? Yes. And, uh, mm. Seeing that, um, particularly for agriculture, yes. you might be dealing with mm. a population yes. that is not empowered yes. to access. Yes. Uh, the technologies you are developing, which may be at the high end for yeah. them. Yes. So um, the approach to collaboration and synergy is part of our operational procedure. The tractor recovery project that I talked to you about, we are in collaboration, for example, with Niger State Government, with a private sector that is uh, maker machinery equipment in West Africa, and then uh, this thing is supported by NASAL, NASAL N I R S A L, a parastatal of uh, CBN, is a Nigeria incentive uh, risk based scheme for agricultural lending. They are the ones that are guaranteeing this. The idea is to ensure that from day one we have private sector on board. Once everything is succeeded, we allow private sector to manage with some royalty to the federal government. And that is exactly what we did with electricity meter. After successful prototype and testing, we have private sector that is interested. And that is exactly what we are doing with Innocent from day one, what is needed. So that we don't develop product that is needed in the market, need-oriented uh, research, market demanding issues that will go to the market. Again. Uh, we are collaborating with so many state government with their unique issues from the beginning. And some industries approach us, especially the SMEs, under their associations, under small, small, some people who conceive the product they want to do, and they don't know where to get the machines. So we commence but the research and produce machines that will ease in plantation, in you know, cultivation, in harvesting, in processing. So we have uh, appreciated that working with the private sector from the beginning. And interestingly, all associations from manufacturers associations, small scale uh, association, three different categories of this uh, organized private sector, are both members of NASENI. So that they shape, they influence what type of research we are doing and how does this impact on them. All right. Yes. Well, uh, Professor Haruda, yes. a pandemic is ravaging the entire world yes. now. COVID-19 yes. is a big, big health challenge. Yes. And uh, Nigeria mm. is uh, really mm. under the effects, mm. both in talking about uh, the health of its people, its citizens, the uh, damage to the overall economy yes. and so many other things. What is Naseni's input yes. in COVID-19 yes. and uh, all efforts yes. to ameliorate its effects? Well, uh, the pandemic is uh, a very sad and unfortunate situation for the world. It is equally a very great opportunity for us in Nigeria a very great opportunity in the sense that particularly to us in science, technology, and innovation sector, it has shown to us that if you don't develop and build your innovation system to be able to be solving your problem yourself and you're relying in on uh, your own raw materials for exploitation, you will end up uh, being completely extinguished because the developed world, everybody is first and foremost looking inward, satisfying his own needs before thinking of anyone else. Immediately at the onset of the COVID-19 when we saw it, Naseni assembled three different research teams, come for them in uh, one in Mina, come for one in Abuja, and one in Okene, and charge them the responsibility of developing first what was needed was uh, preventive equipment. So we uh, developed within seven days, produced uh, samples and tested uh, disinfectant uh, devices, mobile type, 
on truck, on healers, even on uh, KK Naseni, and uh, also install safety tunnels of different types in different places, public places, uh, governmental and uh, offices, uh, in order to ensure that uh, your people are disinfected so that they don't spread the virus. Again, when the issue of a uh, ventilator was a challenge, mm. the World Health Organization, through their Nigerian office, contacted us and said, Naseni, you have done this successfully. What about ventilator? We say, yes, we are researching on it. They helped us and gave us uh, one mechanical ventilator uh, donated to us. We uh, dismantled it. Airbus engineer produced his own mechanical version and also produced electrical uh, version of it. So the whole organization is so happy. What lay is immediate de uh, deployment is lack of uh, protocol and available uh, method that will be used to assess this and uh, conduct clinical tests because no one has done it in Nigeria before. Yes, but uh, given the gravity of the situation, <laughs> exactly. some of these protocols yes. um, be overridden. So as a result of that, that has encouraged NAPRI, National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, to reach out b b with us to World Health Organization. And now Nigeria has developed appropriate protocol for assessing and certifying this. And uh, this equipment is still undergoing uh, clinical tests and whatever they observe needs improvement we are doing. Again, we have done a lot of other things, automatic hand washers, we start from the mechanical thing, the one that will dis uh, dispense soft water, sanitizer, solar operated, manual operated to meet this uh, level. Not only that, Naseni interacted with so many other engineering institutions that claim or have developed one uh, ventilator or one invention and the other. Say, look, let us not work at cross purpose. Why don't you work together and have a best one for Nigeria? And uh, currently, we are in the process of having an advanced version of ventilator that will have the entire patient monitoring devices incorporated in it as a result of the pandemic challenges. Not only that, the uh, challenges has forced us, look, whatever equipment or machine you need, you must develop because a time will come when you will want it and you will not be allowed. In fact, you cannot even travel to go and assess it elsewhere. Not only uh, consumables, even on uh, military equipment that is needed, we must right. develop locally. So that's where we're going next. Yes. Uh, one of the other challenges has to do mm. with insecurity mm. and um, mm. manufacturing equipment that is yes. appropriate for yes. deployment yes. in maintaining yes. uh, security of Nigeria. Yes. And uh, what has been uh, seen is input yes. along with the, uh, yes. the security, yes. military and security agencies. Yes. Well, I must commend the effort of the military research institutions. The military, by, by the military has now a, a research and development bureau and institution of itself. But before then, we have been collaborating with the Nigerian Air Force. A lot of their unmanned area vehicle that they develop locally is through working with Naseni, initially completely designed and developing Naseni laboratory. Our centers across the nation are giving training and orientation to the military. By the director of Mr. President, we are working with Defense Industry Corporation of Nigeria, the Air Force Research Unit, the Navy. The, for security reasons, some things we may not uh, go into detail. But the military is engaging not only in Naseni, other universities, other research and development, output for the benefit uh, of the nation. Currently, there are many of the input of our Nigerian military that are produced locally. Right. Yes. Let's turn to the people now, mm. generally speaking. Yes. And um, one of the ways by which the people, the community can feel the impact of this agency that's mm. to drive industrialization mm. is uh, how much it has incorporated the needs yes. of people. That are, we're yes. talking about a big government 
big private sector. Yes. Now let's come to the small yes. individuals yes. and the larger market of the populace okay. uh, needs, okay. you know, yes. goods and services uh, which are deployed for daily uh, activities. Mm -hmm. How well have we performed there? I see that in one of your mandates said production as yes. well. Yes. Well, um, it is within our operational system and that is what we do. If we identify any individual with formal or no formal education that has some creativity and some innovation to bring him to the mainstream, either to give him more training or assist to develop what he has uh, invented into an innovation so that he can see the light of the day. In addition, it's part of our operational uh, strategy to build skills uh, and develop youth, giving them different uh, training. Uh, we have uh, produced artisan, welders, plumbers. I mean, we are having challenge uh, in, in the country in, in such a way that uh, the best artisan that we will do uh, bricklaying, tiling, POP, and things like that are coming from the neighboring countries while we have uh, jobless uh, youth. So we are involving that, teaching them metal work, plumbing, uh, solar installation, electrical installation. But the good thing is, wherever we train the people, we give them start of facts so that they can uh, be uh, self employed and be able to operate their own. We are doing this a lot sometimes through collaboration with uh, members of the National Assembly, whom we encourage that uh, part of your constituency or zonal intervention project is to ensure that you build and create jobs. And uh, year in, year out, we always have that. And it's making a lot of impact. A lot of places, if we go to install solar, rural electrification, we'll find out that already we have a teaming workforce that we have trained can ask them to do that for us, we only supervise. Most importantly, this will help them to be monitoring it and maintaining it uh, for themselves while they are employed. We're doing that a lot. Again, our SMEs, as I said, those who want to set up, those who have two, three people, approach us. I want to process this fruit juice. I want to do this. Can you give me a machine? We do that at a smaller scale in order to support uh, the development. I think there is an uh, impact. And uh, things like uh, crops drying, a lot of areas they are drying on the road, on stone. Right. You see that uh, we have small solar dryer, a smaller uh, preservative that are affordable. Sometimes we encourage the state government to buy and distribute to the people right. where we cannot uh, do it free of charge. Well, Prof, mm. just before uh, mm. We, 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 we round off. Let yes. me speak to you now as uh, an mm. academic yes. as you are. Mm. Um, the question of the system, yes. the education system, yes. uh, and of course, we started off this discussion and you painted a vivid picture mm. for us of how the technicians, mm. the technologists, mm. the engineers yes. all form this yes. core and yes. uh, neglect of yes. one segment yes. uh, will do damage to yes. all. Yes. Now, you've been through all of it yes. as a technician, yes. a technologist. Mm. There's always this problem mm. about technicians mm. and technologies mm. not being allowed to mm. rise yes. because they're not engineers. Yes. And uh, this tends to downplay their importance yes. in the stream. Yes. Can you speak to that? Yes. Yes, this has been uh, a lot of problem. Despite the fact that uh, the current administration has harmonized and to remove this dichotomy, uh, it is there in policy. It is not yet fully implemented in, in practice. But you see, it's a misplaced priority. When I was uh, a technician in NASCO group of company, uh, my total package uh, as a technician who has not even have a diploma is more than the salary of somebody who has a degree because you are paid based on your output. Right. Uh, elsewhere, a technician can earn even more than the chief executive of the organization because it's based on your output. You are paid extra allowances for performance and you are promoted rapidly. 
But the problem is the prioritization of, of paper qualification instead of competence that has uh, brought about problem. But in private sector, even today in Nigeria, what they need is what can you do, not how much certificate or at what level you have. Um, but, but this uh, will continue until uh, uh, certain, uh, but, but, but you know, allowances and special package is given for those that are actually doing their work for the benefit of the country. And to do that, as I said, we must restore the craft school, the technical colleges. They are very, very important. Across the country, they are almost wiped out. Where they exist, they are only existing in names because you will go and see they are join, doing the theories without materials for practical. I mean, when I was uh, the, the debates and uh, wardrobe I produced myself as a technician in relevant technology uh, by, by uh, 1979, I'm still using it up to today. And I'm uh, proud of it. It's my handwork. Mm -hmm. Now, but today, if you go there, someone will attend that technical school and graduate without having the equipment to produce one for himself. Well, during our time, the state government will never order equipment, uh, furniture, uh, uh, desk, chairs for school, for offices, from any other person. You come to that technical school, you order from there, and the workers, I mean the staff, the students, everybody is busy, they will have experience, they will learn, go and open their workshop, and uh, it's a win-win affairs. The technical schools, technical colleges, craft school must be back. And the idea of having uh, technical university, not university of technology, technical university in which the uh, government That's has pronounced. Yes, there is difference. There is difference. Uh, but, but the technical uh, university everywhere, in fact, elsewhere in the world, you will have polytechnic university. Uh, people who must have gone through craft school or technical colleges to uh, 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 polytechnic. Uh, even the polytechnics are what degrees also do a practical. If you want a degree, continue. Uh, during our time, it was hard. You have to wait. If you go through HND, there is nowhere to go. Otherwise, you need to combat to go to university and do another degree. Right. But this is a thing of the past. Okay. Mm. Professor Mohamed Sani Haruna. Yes. Executive Vice Chairman, Chief Executive mm -hmm. of uh, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Nasini. Mm -hmm. It's been interesting talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for Yeah, thank you All very right. much. We'll yeah. probably ask you to come again yes. and give us yeah. more insight into this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And that's our program today. Well, thank you for watching. Next week, we'll be back with one on one. I am Cyril Stober. Continue to stay safe. I'm <laughs> sorry.